Hello everyone, Weather Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Wednesday evening, January 24, 2024. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what that has been like in your year recently. Also, feel free to ask any weather related question that you might have about the future of the weather in your specific area. Alright, so let us take a look at this tweet by Andy Hazelton. He's one of the persons on Twitter. If you're not already following him, you need to fix that quickly as he posts a lot of very informative things regarding the Atlantic hurricane season. Now, he's actually a scientist that works there at the NOAA. If you actually take a look at this tweet that he made on January 19, it stated right now, the global sea surface temperature distribution looks pretty similar to January 2010, although it's warmer everywhere, now peaking El Nino, warm AMO, etc. 2010 ended up having a solid La Nina and a very warm Atlantic for hurricane season though a weak Bermuda high capped ace and impacts. So he's actually talking about this map. This map is from 2010 and this map is 2024. This is right now. And we can actually see the sea surface temperatures across the globe very much warmer than normal. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about global warming. We can see that the temperatures in 2024, as we can see the yellows, the oranges and reds were widespread across the globe as compared to 20. 10. this was what 14 years ago and we see more cooler than average waters here and there as opposed to 2024 but what he's highlighting is that we had an el nino as represented by those reds in the eastern to central pacific that you know suppresses the atlantic hurricane season not to mention the above normal sea surface temperatures across the main development region and the caribbean during that time in 2010 as well as the similarities with the warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the eastern pacific that has to do with the current el nino as well as the warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the caribbean and the main development region and he highlighted this because 2010 was quite an active year in terms of activity we can see the map right here showing the amount of named storms that we had a lot of tropical storms represented by the blues yellows and oranges representing the hurricanes that we had and in total we had about 21 tropical depressions 19 named storms 12 hurricanes and five major hurricanes for the 2010 season so it's going to be interesting to see exactly what unfolds considering that as he stated 2010 by the end of that year turned out to be an well a la nina where the waters are cooler than average in the eastern pacific thus contributing to more of the focus and upward motion across the Atlantic bring more storms and whatnot so he's stating that since the models have been projecting an a La Nina taking shape later this year it's a possibility that we're gonna be seeing something similar to 2010 or even greater and if we actually remember 2010 we were affected by this storm this was a short-lived storm but it was tropical storm Nicole and look how far away it is or it was at that time Jamaica right here and this system did a number on Jamaica. The system is right, was right here, closer to the western tip of Cuba, affecting portions of the Cayman Islands. And we saw that these clouds stretched even into portions of Jamaica and Haiti. And we had a lot of rainfall across Jamaica. According to Wikipedia, it states, Nicole produced a tremendous amount of rain in Jamaica, totaling to 37.42 inches. That's about 350 millimeters in Belisle or Belisle that was in Westmoreland severe flooding and landslides affected up to 507,831 residents resulting 16 deaths and 42 injuries flooded roadways isolated communities trapping hundreds of people in their homes over 288,000 residences lost power over 40% of the island's water supply systems were in Arprobla at one point and dozens of bridges bridges collapse infrastructure damage totaled to 235.4 million dollars while property damage reached 3.2 million and agriculture damage amounted 6.8 million and that was jamaica alone 
So, not saying that we're gonna be seeing another Nicole, but it is a, a very interesting that Andy, who is an expert at these things, compared this season sea surface temperatures thus far January 2024 with that of January 2010 so it's gonna be interesting to see exactly what unfolds taking a look at the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening we can see that we still have that ridge of high pressure right there off the east coast of the United States represented by that edge sending all of those easterly trade winds across the main development region into the Caribbean and we can also see the tail end of a cold front stretching all the way down into portions of the northern and eastern Caribbean and we can see all of that even better the clouds associated with that cold front stretching and pushing their way into portions of the northeastern Caribbean that's the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, northern Haiti, Cuba getting in on some of the action and we can also see the low, those low level patches of clouds pushing into sections of the Windward Islands as well. We can also see some clouds coming into sections of northeastern South America but we'll be talking more about that later on. Let us focus our attention on what took place across Jamaica for today. So as expected, no video was posted yesterday for today's weather, that's Wednesday's weather, because as you could see, it was quite a sunny day, windy on the south coast, just like the day before, more so a partly cloudy day with more sunshine. And we can see that right now, the latest infrared satellite images are not showing much, more of those clouds coming in from the east being pushed by those strong easterly winds. Taking a look at the temperatures right now, we can see about 27 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 29 degrees Celsius in Kingston. And by about 3 a.m. on Thursday, temperature should dip down to about 24 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 23 degrees Celsius in Kingston. Taking a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow, we can see all of those dark reds that represent above normal temperatures across portions of the southern and eastern United States. So they're getting a warm up at this time in the winter. But well, look at the Caribbean, look at where Jamaica is located. We see some yellows and some oranges that represent up to 3 degrees Celsius above average temperatures. And this map is valid for 18th on Thursday. That's actually 1 p.m. on Thursday for Jamaica. And you know the average temperatures for the month of January in Jamaica are about 86.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about the same when you take a look at the thermometer as 30 degrees Celsius. So if we should be receiving up to 3 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures according to this map by the GFS, it should be anywhere from 30 to 33 degrees Celsius at most. Taking a look at the dry air map, we can see that we have a lot of dry air. Even although we have some low level patches of clouds within those um, you know, patches of dry air, we have some uh, you know some moisture in there. So it's not all 100 percent dry. We do have some yellow, some oranges, some reds in there, a lot of dry air. But we have some moisture within them with those low level clouds but what we don't want to see is the siren dust and we do see a lot of bronze that represent the siren dust across portions of the waters of the eastern main development region africa is represented by those bronze jamaica and the caribbean in the clear as we don't see any of those bronze across the region as well as the wave forecast for tomorrow we do see the purples that represent the 2 meter wave highs to 2 to 3 meter wave highs that is right there off the south and the east coast of the island while we have more so and we have blues that represent maybe 1.5 to 2 meter wave highs across the northern and western waters of the island and that's because the winds are going to be coming in the strongest across the waters on the south coast where we have those yellows we know the yellows represent 25 to 30 knots we have more so and we have greens for the waters to the north and the west of the island that represent 15 to 20 knots and we can see that both the euro and the gfs models are in consensus with this and we can also see those lighter shades of blues that represent little to no wind across inland areas of some eastern central and western parishes in jamaica so if there's a possibility of some amount of rainfall affecting the island tomorrow it's definitely going to be coming off of the waters from the east then affecting sections of some central and western parishes, especially inland areas. And we know when we're talking about eastern parishes, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Surrey, so Portland, St. Thomas, Kingston, St. Andrew, central parishes, you know, we're talking about St. Anne, St. Mary, St. Catherine, Clarendon, Manchester, western parishes, you know, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall, so St. Elizabeth, West Milan, Hava, St. James, Trelawney. And if we actually take a look at the rainfall forecast by the year and the GFS, keep in mind that this is usually what we're here for. 
the rainfall forecast and we can actually see that there's definitely going to be some amount of rainfall coming in from off the sea tomorrow so coming in from the east we have some blues that represent rainfall across sections of eastern parishes so portland section of st thomas kingston maybe section of st mary as well more so eastern kingston or eastern st andrew that is but we do see more of those blues that represent rainfall across the east of st thomas and portland mainly and this is from the gfs well this is from the euro model and all of this is valid for 9 a.m and the thing is it starts at about 8 a.m and i see that it's going up to 9 10 11 a.m and then by afternoon we start to see those blues spread across central and western jamaica see that on the euro this is 3 p.m gfs showing something similar blues that represent rainfall across central and western parishes in jamaica so all of what's coming off of the sea will be pushing from east to west as usual in the afternoon and the accumulated precipitation forecast by both the year and the gfs models are in consensus that yes there's gonna be some amount of rainfall affecting the island tomorrow those lighter shades of greens across central and western parishes in jamaica mainly during the afternoon while it is showing the most rainfall across eastern jamaica you are showing up to 0 0.27 of an inch of rainfall across eastern jamaica gfs showing only up to 0 0.14 of an inch of rainfall either way we can see that the most rainfall within the next 24 hours will be confined to eastern parishes in jamaica just like what the one hour totals were showing and we're indeed grateful that we're going to be getting in on some amount of rainfall we're in the month of january we usually receive up to 97.75 millimeters of rainfall it's only a matter of time before we head into the month of february we have the least amount of rainfall for the year across jamaica to 65.4 so we'll take all the rainfall that we can get in the month of january in the dry season before the national water commission starts you know imposing some amount of restrictions in some areas they're struggling with water so <laughs> we're indeed grateful all right so that's it for the forecast across jamaica let us focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so we do see a lot of clouds bringing rainfall to sections of honduras belize the yucatan peninsula nicaragua section of the abc islands definitely getting in on some amount of passing showers especially to the north of those islands some rainfall going into sections of cuba haiti the dominican republic especially another in haiti sections of puerto rico not to mention sections of the windward islands are anywhere from dominica southward martinique saint lucia barbados saint vincent the grenadines grenada trade and tobago special tomorrow trade and tobago is going to be getting in on some amount of rainfall we can also see those clouds coming into sections of northeastern south america so french guyana suriname guyana getting in on the action and if we actually take a look at the Doppler radar images of the northeastern caribbean to confirm all of what we just saw on the satellite images we can see that rainfall that we just mentioned across sections of puerto rico the u.s and british virgin islands sections of anguilla antigua and barbuda st kitts and nevis guadalupe dominica where we see those greens all of that is rainfall and it has been plaguing those islands throughout the day today if we take a look at the barbados radar we don't see much happening across barbados right now but we can see some amount of blues and greens that represent rainfall passing to the north of barbados some of that to the west of barbados as well affecting sections of martinique sections of saint lucia saint vincent and the grenadines grenada trinidad and tobago more so trinidad than tobago well more so tobago sorry than trinidad <laughs> trinidad getting in on some of the action but tobago getting in on most of the rainfall taking a look at the wider view of doppler radar images we can see that rainfall that we mentioned most of it passing to the north of the abc islands as we speak but some of it sprinkling here and there we can also see that rainfall that we also mentioned across sections of belize and the yucatan peninsula if we take a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow we do see more so in the way of grays that represent normal temperatures not to mention blues that represent below normal temperatures especially across the waters and the islands of the northeastern caribbean all courtesy of the cold front that we saw early on the surface map if we look back we can see the cold front right here represented by the blue line and the red which shows that it is very much stationary at this time and it explains the below average temperatures we know usually behind a cold front we have cooler than average temperatures which is why it's called a cold front and we can see it right here 
majority of the central to the western caribbean should be having above normal temperatures as represented by those yellows oranges and red as it relates to the siren dust forecast for 2 p.m on thursday we do see that majority of the caribbean should be in the clear for that time with all of the dust represented by the browns across portions of the eastern main development region waters as well as sections of africa as it relates to the wave forecast for tomorrow across the caribbean we do see that both the and GFS models are in consensus that most of the purples, burgundies, reds that represent 2 meter wave heights, 3 to 4 meter wave heights should be affecting sections of the Eastern Caribbean, the waters of the Central and Western Caribbean, definitely to the south of Jamaica, to the north of Panama getting in on that action. And that's because we're still in for a lot of strong winds. You know, when it comes to this map from the windy website, we can see the greens that represent 15 to 20 now winds you can see that for the most part the winds are coming in from the east across the central and western caribbean east northeast is where the winds are coming from across the eastern caribbean and we do see more in the way of yellows not to mention gold that represent 25 to 30 knot winds which explains why we have more in the way of purples the stronger the winds the higher the wave heights two to three meter wave heights are what expected as it relates to the rainfall forecast, we do see that rainfall is definitely in the forecast from now up until, you know, 10 p.m. on Thursday. This map is showing 3Z on Friday. That's actually 10 p.m. on Thursday. If the rain is not already falling right now, it's definitely going to be in the forecast. It's a definite section of the eastern Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, section of Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, section of Panama, the ABC Islands, especially waters to the north of there. You can also see a lot of rainfall in store for sections of French Guyana, coastal areas of Suriname, coastal areas of Guyana, northeastern Venezuela, definitely sections of Trinidad and Tobago, not to mention sections of the Windward and Leeward Islands, more so in the way of, let's say, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica, Guadeloupe, sections of the Leeward Islands, so Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Wheeler, Barbuda, sections of eastern Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic getting in on some of that action as well. I know that when both maps from the year and the GFS models are in consensus like this, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.